Good morning, Hello. everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to the morning session. And today we have with us uh, Dr. P. N. Shivalingam, sir, is principal scientist NIBSM Baroda Raipur. Uh, we are uh, sorry that there was an initial delay for some technical issue with the resource person. Now that we have overcome that challenge, uh, let me welcome again Dr. P. N. Uh, uh, Shivalingam. And the topic chosen for deliberation is. Molecular characterization of mushrooms. Uh, sir, you are audible as well as uh, your presentation is visible. Please start, sir. Okay. Uh, I think uh, all participants joined. I think good morning to all of you. Um, I'm sorry and apologies for the uh, late and technical inconvenience may, made to you. And uh, this is the topic which has given as a characterization of uh, molecular characterization of mushrooms. So uh, this is, my, my, I hope uh, most of them are participating with have knowledge of basic knowledge of pathology and also about the molecular biology. I, I think uh, I can start from the basic because many of them are, it may be a heterogeneous uh, groups of the audience. So the molecular characterization of mushrooms, um, this one actually mushroom or toadstool is the fleshy spore bearing fruit body of the fungus. So what we are eating is that this is just a fungus and the spore, uh, fruit bearing, uh, spore bearing fruit body which we are eating. That is typically produced above ground on the soil on its food source. Food source means the decomposed materials. Okay. The mushroom varieties and their values we have to see now. So the, uh, uh, on this earth, more than 30,000 identified types of mushrooms are available on the worldwide, among which 99% are safe, uh, safely and edible. Roughly 1% is poisonous, but we have to care about that. And uh, so still many of the mushrooms are undiscovered. I think you might be aware that there is no medium has been standardized yet. And still we are struggling to some of the extreme, uh, extreme situation mushrooms. So that we that, that you can look into the other uh, slides. So by uh, importance of the mushrooms, mushrooms, why we eat mushrooms with for the nutritional values and flavors, high protein content, low fat content, high fat, like that. But now recently, these are uh, th this mushroom is uh, mainly uh, that we are using for a nutrient purpose or any other point of view. Among that, now we have to go moving an era of the some of the starts of technical innovations, those things we are starting. So we, we have to think beyond and we have to isolate a, a, a biochemical nutraceutical compounds, which will be used for the routine for our uh, can, uh, treating the cancers, treating some of the uh, lifestyle diseases, etc. For which the mushroom is the, one of the major uh, component which comes into rescue. However, uh, and then uh, this is a, this medicinal values were the importance only this mushroom uh, we have to deal about. So uh, before going to that, that we have uh, you might have uh, listened from other lectures. So first we have to why we have to go for the characterization before for knowing mushroom characterization. So we will know something about the fungus. Then we will Excuse be clear me, about the molecule. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, sorry for interrupting you. I'm just one of the yeah. participants. So is it possible yes, to zoom uh, the your presentation? It's like coming in very small. Uh, yeah, actually, it... actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, you you are correct. I, I am putting in the zoom full screen only. But actually, what is happening? I am coming. I mean, I am uh, talking through mobile. Actually, that that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. no problem. So before knowing mushrooms, so the old classification of fungi, as we all know that in the uh, class, class students class. So there was a, um, this Carl Linnae has made that uh, two kingdom classifications. Okay, in the uh, uh, way back, uh, not way back, it is very old, 17th century. So that uh, plant and animal kingdom he has been separated out. Okay, and then fungi is a fungi is was put into the plant kingdom. So then there was a three kingdom classifications proposed by Haeckel, 1866. So he has added the uh, 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 
he has added the uh, another kingdom uh, the plant animalia and then protista so all the unicellular algae fungi and bacteria he put into the protista and then uh, the later the copland and barclay around 1968 the proposed the four kingdom classifications still little more advanced Le, uh, uh, something why i am saying is that this is the basic for the uh, knowing uh, uh, and imagination for the how the king, uh, classifications to be done and characterizations to be done so they have asked that distinct nucleus so based on the distinct nucleus portion prokaryotes and eukaryotes have been made prokaryotes has, uh, uh, doesn't have clear cut uh, distinct nucleus so eukary however nucle eukaryotes have that and then in pro prokaryotes all the moniras uh, come into that and in the eukaryote protista animalia plantae the protista is the something kind of yeast you can imagine that means uh, some of the uh, fungi yeast and those things monira will have the blue green algae and then bacteria so these are the groups which have the distinct nucleus that are in eukaryotes and then uh, the without distinct nucleus that put in prokaryotes that was the four kingdom classification next is the uh, five kingdom classification proposed in the little bit of the same period 1969 the five kingdom classifications proposed by the vitaker so what he has done he has put into the uh, monira protista plants animalia and fungi this has uh, so classification based on the uh, sexual reproduction motility and types of food ingestion that is those which are having photosynthesis multicellular organism put into plant and non motile in case of anima animals multicellular and ingestion type of food motile and sexual and in case of fungi that is more important in the uh, for our uh, talk eukaryotic this is a multicellular it's observant types of uh, food ingestion uh, food and the non motile and sexual and in case of uh, protista that all the unicellular eukaryotes have been put and monida that is the pro, uh, same prokaryotes and bacterial type of organism they have put uh, put in he put inside so later you can see this is a ribosomal rna characterization see peterson and soging they given evidence that in the 1992 the what vitaker have been done vitaker have been done for the uh, five kingdom classifications so based on that this is by uh, uh, organization of cell the same organization using the ribosomal rna uh, this classification have been done archibacteria is separated u bacteria is separated and then protozoa promista pro plant animalia he has put eukaryota and prokaryota into another group so this is shows that the ribos this is a molecular evidence that yes, the whatever the earlier kingdom classification is uh, perfect and in case of uh, alexobolus 1979 he put into the classification whole of the fungi under uh, under the fungi there are four kingdom classifications zygomycotina ascomycotina basidiomycotina deuteromycotina so what we want to delve about today the mushroom that comes in ascomycotina and then basidiomycotina um, ascomycotina and basidiomycotina groups so these are the these two uh, are the um, mo most of the mushrooms falls under this group so the classification of mushrooms fungi the most of the uh, mushrooms belongs to the subdivision basidiomycota and few of them are in ascomycota under the kingdom fungi so there are basidiomycota there are that more over 30000 species as exist so it includes many of the toadstools bracket fungi puffball earthball stars something like uh, all of them okay and uh, i think these details uh, uh, sub phylum in the uh, agaricomycota the biggest sub phylum contain 20000 species which uh, 70% total basidiomycota uh, was comes under this group so then uh, can go the division of basidiomycota under basidiomycetes order agaricales it contains the most of the mushrooms and uh, this a puff bulb lycopedrels mm, lycopedrels fhelophorels and tremulus these all of them are some of the fungi which are related to group of the mushrooms okay and another one the classification of mushrooms morphological characterization they have done so why i am saying is that morphological characterization which is equally an important for your characterization classifications because it, you cannot neglect so how these markers are going to use then that can be imagined for the molecular characterization so morphological features and characterizations used in identification size of the fruiting body and the cap in the cap the color shape size surface and textures they have used and for the classification stalk 
size color presence of ring shape so these things they have used already all, and also type of spore production structures that is gills spores or spines and its characters so based on these we have classified what, what now you want to imagine that these morphological features are the not the morphological feature they are the morphological markers okay these are the you can use it as a marker suppose cap color is uh, cap color or shape is different so we will put into another character uh, according to we have to put into the classification so like that they are the markers so when you are seeing the mushroom if it is a um, uh, dull color that you are putting in brown color we will put into and then orange color we will put into that they are the markers so just remind that uh, i am uh, repeatedly reminding you why because again marker people uh, confuse many, many of them not the known persons they were not confused so the unknown uh, unknown means they are not enter into the molecular markers they will have the confused these are the markers and these are the types of mushrooms that you must be knowing this is the toadstool amanita champion oyster and cicad mushroom these are the different types of mushroom and these are the markers you can view that different colors are marker different shapes are markers so they are the markers so put into the mind that this is are the markers why i am showing is that because when you get the some different band size of the different band imagine that they are the different colors that is a markers so we have to coordinate with according to that that's why i am putting into types of markers the morphological characterization first initially what they have done which i was showing you that uh, number of fruiting bodies uh, what is the uh, stripe length pilus length pilus width margin these are them used for the it is evidence shows that these are the uh, fleurotus uh, they have used the different species of fleurotus they have characterized accordingly okay and then the they have used the biochemical markers okay biochemical what are the biochemical markers the biochemical compound like total soluble sugars reducing total soluble sol uh, soluble salts and reducing sugars non reducing sugars and crude protein these are the uh, can be measured accordingly different species have their different types they have classified but these morphological markers or biochemical markers why we are not using why we have to move the molecular characterization molecular ca markers why we have to use for the characterization so these markers are tissue dependent suppose some of them uh some of the uh, some of the tissue dependent this biochemical compound may be expressing in uh, gills more expressing in early stage more expressing in late stage and also media dependent and also environmental factors influences so we cannot make it as a stable markers okay in morphology also it depends on the environmental conditions other external influence so therefore these markers cannot be used at any time however when you go for the some of the protein markers which you can ask the questions protein markers or biochemical markers or some of them are standard now that is also the expression level is different and then type of compound will be different according to your environment so therefore what you have to do the stable marker is the genome that is a dna part you have to use it that is a stable at different environment different tissue and any plant any tissue any time you can take that is the a dna marker one we have you have to use it so this is a molecular characterization so breeders now use same similar kind of uh, same thing for the plant breeding and genetics people are using the uh, dna markers to identify the specific genes or locate the superior traits and these genetic markers there is a, 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 a easier for the monogenic traits and then polygenic traits same these markers used for molecular assisted uh, selection now the um, uh, compared to the mushrooms the uh, plants have gone ahead with that different kinds of marker dna markers used for the selection and these markers associated with some agronomic traits such as cap shape cap color that also have been proved in uh, 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 in the mushroom okay and now the we will go to individually the individual uh, markers we can see that this rapd marker random amplified polymorphic dna markers have been used for the uh, mushroom this is also i am just showing an just an example so where we have to use the you can if, if you are don't know about the marker for those uh, mushroom fungi extract the dna and then uh, use the uh, use the single primer and then you can go for the low temperature when you low temperature wherever it finds the reverse the size will be different 
and the variation should be the size different kinds of uh, length of the uh, markers will be used so we are going for we need ultimately all genome sequence we need for the mushroom that is actually a physical map so when it is there then only we can differentiate but we cannot make everything to be sequenced so therefore we cannot make everything sequence and then we cannot make everything ultimately going that is high costly and that is no not necessarily so that's why we have to go for rfp uh, first initially if we don't know anything then go for rfp marker wherever if it have the variance that will show then you will quant you will uh, quantify the bands presence and options with 0 1 and then you can in the uh, software you can found polymorphic information content so by that way you can group the mushrooms which group it belongs which group it uh, making clusters and how it has um, deviated from other fungi like that so the next marker is the internal transcript spaces and nuclear subunit marker this also quite largely used in the fungus and also uh, that is true for mushroom also this is a internal transcript uh, spacer this is a ribosomal dna okay you are getting ribosomal rna you are getting no? same thing from the genome it has the it is a eukaryote it has 18s subunit and then 5.8s between and then 28s so we will use the its1 means its1 region means it is a region between 18s and 5.8s and the region 2 is the as uh, its2 is the region between 5.8 and 28s so why we are not using 18s 5.2s and then this 28s these are the very highly conserved area so we should not use these two in between area is a variable region where we can find you can ask a question that why we have to use ribosomal uh, sequence because ribosomal sequence is conserved in the evolutionary region so ribosomal part is uh, the uh, maternal side it comes so the you can go back any day and then how the evolution happened what was the relations that you can understand very easily and this has been you have to isolate the dna put the pcr with the primers which is overlapping with 18s and then 28s these regions you can amplify and then you can directly sequence it or otherwise you can clone in a vector and then sequence it based on the sequence you can make a software are available now by uh, same bioedit megalin and philly same so many softwares are there make based on that software you can make a phylogenetic evolution and also you can make the consensus sequences where it is differing so so many things you can see based on these its markers so this is the uh, amplified region so this has been used for ribosomal dna amplification and then run into the gel and then you can uh, uh, check that whether it is uh, this has been uh, to be sequenced or not sequenced you can tell that this picture is showing that there is a fluorota uh, different fluorota species and then agaricus they are used for the amplification okay so most of the cases yeah, this is not a length wise there is no variation this is only to be sequenced and then we have to go for the diversity analysis or the characterization of the mushrooms different strains so next is the aflp uh, marker amplified fragment length polymorphic markers so what aflp uh, will do in uh, compared to rapd so we need uh, some uh, sequence information is necessary here rapd is not necessary and then this aflp there is a two uh, things we are using one we are using restriction enzymes to restrict and then second is the pcr and then one nucleotide second nucleotide third nucleotide so there is a variations there is a procedures standards well set so you can isolate the dna known the markers and then run it on the pcr amplified product you can run it on the gel then you can see like this uh, this is done for the uh, uh, this is uh, this is done for the fluorotest and you can see these there are a series of bands which you can visualize in the agarose gel uh, gel electrophoresis and then based on those you can score the markers and then make a diversity so remind that this aflp markers it's a more, uh, the it has the uh, restriction and then uh, there is a pcr amplification variation is induced in case of rflp only pcr sorry uh, rapd you can only u- uh, use the uh, pcr based variation and in case of uh, restricted fragment length polymorphism that is coming to uh, i am coming that is actually only you isolate the genomic dna restrict with restriction enzyme 
and then run it on the gel so variation in the restriction that shows the rflp restriction fragment length polymorphism so what we are doing now here is that aflp is combination of both rapd and rflp so these based on these markers also we can characterize they have already proved that they have characterized so this is the way one of the ways for to characterize the fungus and then this is a another uh, another marker uh, now this is the uh, aflp marker and then another one retro transposon micro satellite amplified polymorphism you might be heard about micro satellite uh, markers what is retro transposon retro transposon is the transposable elements which uh, uh, move from the uh, genome to genome and increase the size all the stories you might have uh, read in the basic class so basically this uh, this is one of the technique uh, retro transposon micro satellite amplified polymorphism fingerprinting marker this is also used for um, characterizing the mushrooms so this is the uh, you uh, you can uh, view into the next picture so the, this is actually uh, picture a shows uh, this is the uh, ltr region this is the sir can uh, you pinch zoom can you pinch zoom on the slide zoom uh, like you do on a photograph can you do pinch pinch zoom pinch zoom it is uh, it is like this. the way you do it on your yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's okay yeah 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 this is uh, this is the retro transposon between the retro transposon and then ltr that is between the retro transposon and the micro satellite markers so between them you can design the primer and you can run the gel so we can get a variation based on those variation you characterize the mushroom groups and then i think now it's visible okay mm. yeah um and this is uh, this is called re map analysis same thing retro transposon uh, molecular amplified polymerism this is the way looks the gel this is the 10 micro mushroom species have been characterized like this the genomic the, the these are mostly uh, philinas cordyceps gonoderma for all of them they have used this kind of markers that is uh, this is the retro transposon micro satellite based markers used for the uh, mushrooms so now i can give a sketch of idea which you can use it for your uh, study so this is also a, 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 a same thing retro transposon uh, micro satellite markers which you can uh, see here in the picture they made the gel picture and also phylogenetically made the group so by this way fluorotus and other irini strain of the fungus most of them fluorotus they are used so these are the ways to characterize the mushrooms okay and also another one inter simple sequence repeat inter simple sequence repeats marker is similar to um, uh, rapd but here we can use the uh, two primers and also Uh, we must know that uh, the simple sequence repeats that is actually a sim uh, uh, use the sim between the region of the simple sequence repeats okay inter simple sequence repeats so between the ssr markers if there is a inter simple sequence repeats marker is available this is also pcr based and also you can use the um, uh, amplification and after amplification score them presence and options similar to one zero uh, options is zero one uh, presence is one and again you can uh, a data entry and then put into the um, software and you can uh, analyze the grouping and also polymorphic information content okay these are the gels looks like that in case of uh, issr so the, the, this kind uh, these uh, groups you can also use rapd issr you can use to tag the unique bands also when you don't know about the idea of the mushrooms if you are amplifying by these markers you will get a unique bands those unique bands you can group it into bulk segregation analysis method you can identify for associate with some characters that is used for associating the some of the characters and then this is a simple sequence repeat marker simple sequence repeats again we we need the uh, sequ uh, we need the information and also without needing information we can go for the technique that you can go for the beat technique that you can simple sequence repeat randomly you can make and then you can use it even here mushrooms you can use and then heterologous other fungus some of the simple sequence repeats marker suppose developed that you can use but uh, here there are uh, uh, simple sequence repeat markers used for button mushrooms 
and all, uh, and they have made the uh, polymorphic information and also the they have made the um, uh, grouping so this also is a stable marker codominant marker this also one can use it and you can see this is the uh, variation they apply dinucleotide trinucleotide tetranucleotide these nucleotides variations how it happens when it is a crossing over uh, during the crossing over these nucleotides at the end of the, uh, the telomeric region this simple sequence repeats are making variation those variations we can trace out and making the group this is the and then the snp markers you can single nucleotide polymorphism that uh, make uh, that is very important and also the you can uh, use for the genetic variations mutations and uh, you can associate these single nucleotide changes in the investigation of complex genetic group genetic variation but in case of mushrooms it is not quite frequently not, not used much but um, this uh, this is the way they are used it is an c uh, they are gonna hello sorry gonoderma lucidum for gonoderma lucidum strains they are used for the single nucleotide polymerism they have sequenced and class they, they have sequenced it and after the sequence the position of the sequence variations they have tagged with the shape this is what i was uh, from the beginning i was mentioning there is a kidney shape and antler shape they have see the you can see the arrow from the arrow there is a uh, this is the uh, position which shows the, the nucleotide variation this is a single nucleotide see the shape and only the shape they have uh, correlated with this this is uh, mostly two year back the this has been published okay and then um, based on the snp markers they are used for snp markers for specific identification of antler shape gonoderma lucidum fruiting body and snp marker validation they have done the fruiting bodies with restriction enzyme you can see that um, the gel uh, uh, which are move the band size all moving in equal size but however antler shape when they have used the snp marker that means where the restriction enzymes can do that job so after restriction you can see 1 2 3 4 3 2 3 4 are same remain common one is restricted that shows that that antler group is one so you can identify associate that shape it is uh, simply to you can have a uh, thinking that it's go what kind of uh, implications so this is an example that you can correlate the morphological marker with molecular marker you can find that these are the things can be correlated in biochemical features which we are interested where we can do that this fungus whether this fungus is having those genes or not that we have to think of this is an one of the approach to move on so in another case in case of going we have seen that so many things of the markers okay that rapd issr rflp uh, and then ssr marker snp markers okay and earlier i have mentioned that for all of them the genome uh, genome sequence is the ultimate uh, ultimate uh, variation to be known but the G uh, they have done for the genome sequence of the mushrooms now you can see two, two year back they have done for 90 mushrooms they have been and published so what uh, this genome information have been uh, you have to refer for those what are the features how they have approached it and how they have sequenced it so again uh, there is an another example for the fluorotus genome sequence of oyster mushroom this also have been done by the chinese group and these have been also published and why i am showing these all the genome sequences these are the public database which are available for you you want to make marker you want to use the sequence you want to make the grouping so these are the resource you can utilize for making uh, molecular markers and also you can find the markers for the gene uh, suppose you want to uh, characterize the gene where you can get it you can isolate some of the genes uh, for the biochemical for your interest some of the genes pathways are important so all of them are revolving we we have to revolve around the genome sequence so for which these databases are useful and also they have uh, uh, conducted the same uh, uh, same thing for mushrooms which have uh, the differential gene expression in the mycelial browning and also what are the genes are up regulated what are the genes are down regulated this also have been done for the differential gene expression mushroom is not only for cultivation and cultivation and eating but these these genes are very valuable genes 
for we, we this is shown in for mycelial pruning so to avoid mycelial pruning we have to make a selection for the the long storage life so we have to correlate this uh, information into sir, pinch that sir zoom sir pin zoom if you are trying to show detail uh, you can yeah. pin zoom to any level so that they could see yeah yeah so these are the uh, differential gene expressions during mycelial uh, browning so this you can look into that these approaches you can use it and and another one uh, is that the uh, identification of light induced phenotypic specific clusters so they have identified the transcriptome that they have identified from the transcriptome sequence and also they have made the light induced phenotypic specific clusters they made the group and they have made the uh, genes which are uh, group uh, those genes which are expressing due to light and without light so this also you are useful information which also you can uh, make a, a, a reference so 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 you can uh, get so now you can see the biochemical compounds of from the mushrooms you can see ergosterol lipid fraction oxalic acid and then gonodermic acid see some of them are anti tumors these ergosterol peptidoglycan anti bacterial anti tumor anti viral there are gonoderma species having the uh, anti viral and also you can see the anti allergic compound so these fungus are uh, possessing um, these these many biochemical characters okay so what we can do uh, <coughs> basically we, we have the knowledge for the molecular marker we have the knowledge now for genome sequencing we have how to do transcriptomes and how to analyze and what are the genes are responsible so basically <coughs> these compounds we can isolate from the mushrooms whether it is cultivable or non cultivable because we, for all of them there is a media requirement is very uh, uh, rigid so this is uh, uh, we cannot make uh, media for all the mushrooms <coughs> sometimes we can get it from the nature sometimes it may 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 not so we have we cannot all the time search the mushrooms okay first we have to search the mushrooms and then mushrooms we will characterize it and then what are the genes you can take out for all this at least for this we uh, nutraceutical biochemical compound so these compounds will be uh, we can identify the genes in the pathway and we can make a group into uh, we can uh, take out the genes and make into bacteria and other uh, eukaryotic system we can um, uh, make an expression so these biochemical compound we can get in a, a multiple uh, quan uh, that in a high quantity and then we can use for these are the purpose and a tumor or hiv virus and also anti allergenic these purposes we can use for that so this is one of the ways these for, for those things these genome sequence is necessary transcriptomic data is necessary and then grouping of the mushrooms are necessary uh, these are the things why we have to do these groupings and characterization these are the mushrooms are necessary every time we no need to wait for that we have to go far into the uh, another uh, era that is pharmaceutically pharmaceutical pharma industries level we have to think for the mushroom mushroom is uh, not for just uh, for which these resources are necessary so uh, and then thank you very much if you have any any questions please ask right now yeah no uh, any participants do you have any questions let me know i hope everybody is understand or everybody is not <laughs> hello if there any questions please ask if there are no questions we can consider the yeah, session perfect. to be concluded no sir no questions yeah please vinay ask yeah, I... no questions sir as i am not a so like you know technical person so I hello just... i am not listening so please can you uh, be a bit louder vinay your voice is uh... yeah, yeah. i don't have any questions sir actually i am not sir. you know a technical person so i just got this informations for me yeah 
Okay. I don't have any query or some confusion on that. I just got the information only. So I'm okay with okay. it. Just yeah, okay. Just share the picture, no sir, problem. because it was not so visible. Yeah, I, I definitely I will share it to you and you can use it, no problem. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thanks a lot, sir. Sure. Uh, thank you, thank you. Okay. Any other question? Uh... Namaskar, sir. Okay. Uh, namaste, namaste. Uh, actually, I am not uh, a technical person. Actually, I am a grower. But okay. uh, one query just clicked uh, me that uh, nowadays we are uh, hearing in the news that uh, yeah. the coronavirus is going through the mutations. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, I want to know that the, do uh, the fungi oh. also go, yeah. go through the mutation process? Yeah, definitely. It, 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 uh, right, your uh, asking question is okay. The fungal fungus is going for mutations. It is, it is not. It is true for every organisms. Okay. Uh, okay. The in case well, the one part, one is that spontaneous mutation that you might have read. That is in the ten power six. One in one in million. Definitely, the population will mutate. That is the natural uh, theoretical uh, level. But in the fungus also, that mutation also happens. Coronavirus, why it is mutation fast? Virus is within a cell. It has the more than 1 million population within a cell, I'm talking. But the fungus is a little bit a bigger organism. It will have a, a population a little bit, it has to grow more. Like a human, a 1 lakh population will occupy the how much area you can understand. And the virus can occupy within a cell. So that's why the frequency of mutation higher in virus and in other organism, including mushroom, it will be less. And another thing, a virus cannot do this uh, sexual kind of uh, reproduction. But mushrooms and fungus can have the sexual kind of reproduction where it can induce the variations. So there, because of those variations, in addition to that, fungus have the pseudo recombinations uh, mechanisms, and and uh, this have the uh, variations it can induce. So that way, uh, you will get a more variations in the mushrooms also. Thank you. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, sir. May I ask a good question? Yeah, good afternoon. Please. Uh, I'm Dr. Pooja speaking from uh, Indore Betty Mushroom, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, as you had shown in the slides, like biochemical characterization and molecular characterization. So Ajay. I just wanted to know that in case of molecular characterization, the markers you are using, uh, yeah. uh, are those uh, markers, maybe some uh, point I would have missed during the voice missing. So yeah. uh, the markers which are being used, that is specifically for the fruit bodies or for the mycelium part you are targeting? Yeah, you, 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 from where you want to isolate your DNA. Okay. From yeah, any you, of that? Yeah, you can take anything. You can take a mycelial body or you can take the mature body. The DNA is same. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, the results will be same only. So it, result, that is, yeah, differentiation will be easy in that case. Result, result must be same. The DNA, if you're using result must be thin, you can take any of the tissues. You see mycelium or you, hmm. you can see the... Uh, same hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah. okay thank you yeah, sir sure. okay any other question sir i think there are no further questions yeah sure thank you Mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of the participants and on behalf of yes. the organizing committee we express our gratitude sir Thank sure. you for being with us. Yeah, now, if you could uh, revert back to my email with the PPT, yeah. and yeah. I'll make it part of the YouTube video, which is going to be uploaded. I'll make it a PDF and make it a part of the YouTube video. Sure, sure, sure. sure. I will share it now. I will send it to you just now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank everyone. You, thank you. Thank you. Let's thank join you. back at uh, two thirty for the next session. Thank you. Okay. Link will be shared in the WhatsApp group and on your email. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.